Welcome to the Animation Industry Podcast. My name is Terry Ibell, and that's pronounced Terry Ibell. Today I'm interviewing a self-taught stop-motion animator who's got 100,000 subs on YouTube with over 35 million views, 17,000 subs on Twitter, and 40,000 subs on Instagram, and his name is DM Galloway. Now, over the years, he's worked with such brands like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Halo, Captain America, Iron Man, and so many other cool brands that have super cool action figures, because that's mainly what he does. He animates action figures in stop motion for companies. In our chat, he's going to share how he got into this super niche business, how he's grown his following over the years, and what it takes to keep getting client work. But first, this episode is sponsored by Cloud Stop Motion, who've created possibly the easiest way to start animating from your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop in seconds. Simply go to cloudstopmotion.com and click Start Animating. Their software works in any modern browser, and your files are instantly saved to the cloud. The best part is that they are completely free to use, up to 500 megabytes of storage, which is actually quite a lot. And they're especially useful if you're teaching a class, since you can create an organization account, which comes with two gigabytes of free storage as standard, and allows the creation of unlimited student groups and profiles, all of whose projects and work you can view for yourself from your admin account. Go to cloudstopmotion.com to see how easy it is to get started. And now, without further ado, well, actually, there is some further ado. I had a few technical difficulties recording this chat, which resulted in some echo coming from my end, and I hope you don't mind that too much. But now, without further ado, let's jump in. Hi, DM. How are, how are you doing? Hey, Terry. I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm excited to chat because uh, I have been following your work for a bit and I think you're super cool because you're like an independent animator doing specifically and only stop motion, which is so rare. And I want to pick your brain. <laughs> pick away. Pick away. But first, okay, something that's very interesting to me is uh, how you kind of have a pen name for your animator persona. And, and it's interesting to me because most people want their personal name attached to their work you know for instance like me like it's kind of like an ego boost when i see like terry attached to like credits and like work and stuff so just tell me what the reason is behind choosing a pen name instead of your actual name for your animated persona well see back in 2013 2013 was it 2013 no 2011 back in 2011 when i started my youtube channel i was about 13 or 14 years old and being on a big platform such as youtube or any other social media account you know i don't really want i didn't want my actual name you know associated with whatever i do just in case it got big or whatever yeah. um obviously i was a minor then don't want like weirdos contacting me or finding where i live or whatever and uh growing up if what i did was successful you know have some privacy you know i i see how uh with some people uh some animators they do they do like you said have their name attached to their work and whatnot but then you see um, them on podcasts and whatnot talking about, oh, they don't like it when they go to a convention and so-and-so bothers them while they're at the bathroom or whatever. And so, um, so, I, so I just stuck with my initials and I stuck with my last name, like, you know, T.S. Elliott, F. Scott Fitzgerald, J.J. Abrams, D.M. Galloway works for me because it is my name, but you just don't know what the D and yeah. the M stand for. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay, question for you, because you said you were hoping weirdos and stuff that don't contact you if you become famous. Well, you're pretty much famous now, you know, like 35 plus million views on YouTube, etc. Has it have any weirdos contacted you? I mean I mean through through like the business accounts and stuff, but I'm very good at like filtering and making filtering sure that, making sure that they're those type of messages are like deleted before I even open them. Because you know how on Facebook and stuff, when you click a message, yeah. it'll show the other person if you read the message or not. I just try my best to avoid, you know, clicking it. If I if I read the first few words and I could get a sense of what's where it's going to lead to uh i just leave it alone what is the weirdest message you ever got if you don't mind me asking that you looked at i think like some 50 year old was trying to get me to do like a punisher show or something like you know the marvel character punisher and 
this guy's not associated with Marvel, and that was very evident that he was not associated with Marvel. And he, it was evident that he didn't have a lot of money to create such a show either. Yeah, it was like a weird, a weird thing where you, where initially he contacted me on Facebook, and then he went on on the business email, and I just got to ignore stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> it's interesting that you bring that up because, like, for instance, like I don't have a crazy following. Like, I think I have like almost 6,000 followers on like, Instagram or whatever. But like, I get a couple of messages every single month from people asking me to do music videos or like sculptures and stuff. And like, it's very evident that they don't know what animation costs or the time mm -hmm. involved. So I can, like, I can imagine how many messages you're getting like all the time. Right. Your stuff is so popular. I, I do get messages like those, but going back to the guy with the Punisher, it seemed like he had like it, it's not that he didn't know about animation or anything. It just seems like like a weird situation where someone older is trying to take advantage of someone younger uh, without doing anything. Like it was just a very weird uh i guess like managery kind of weird thing gotcha and uh i know all the tricks so all the tricks, i stay trick. clear for Don't open click away delete so okay yeah. um before this i was scrolling through your youtube and you have something like you have over 300 stop motion videos with action figures which i think is insane so are you doing this are you doing this like every single day um well, back back when I was mainly with YouTube, I would almost pretty much do it every day. Um, since I stopped doing YouTube, I've sl I haven't slowed down because I still upload stuff weekly. It's just not as long as it used to be. Yeah. Because before I would do animations that are 12 frames per second. So it was a, a much faster turnaround. Nowadays, I'm doing 24 to 30 frames per second. So I just and the attention spans of like of people now are much shorter. So yeah. so the the quality goes up and like the views go up because even though it's shorter, that's what everyone's preferring. That's crazy. I think it's crazy also that you've doubled your frames. Like most TV shows are animated at like 12 frames a second and you're like especially with stop motion you're doubling it um okay so i have so many questions that i want to ask you one is this whole youtube era era you know like you were 13 14 whatever when you started how much like like did you start getting views right away because your stuff was was like super stand out like you're using action figures everybody loves watching like lego animations action figure animations of like their favorite characters etc did you start realizing views right away when you started doing this not not entirely immediately like they were okay views i think my peak years were probably like 2014 2015 which is probably like my second or third year into doing it um yeah, yeah. the reason i started youtube was because i always wanted to be a film director a filmmaker uh, my mom had taken me to universal studios florida uh, throughout my childhood, I, I was born in 95. So back in like the early, the late nineties, early two thousands, universal theme parks were so focused on filmmaking and whatnot. And I thought it was absolutely magical and, uh, wanted to be in that world so badly, but growing up, uh, a lot of my friends had zero interest in like acting in, yeah. uh, like making these w weird films or whatever so the next best thing was like my action figures like i was a big wwe fan um i had a bunch of wrestling figures and i saw on youtube that there were people making uh wrestling shows with their wrestling figures and i'm like oh i could do that but see the thing was they were doing their wrestling show every like month or every few months i wanted to be stand out by making it weekly like the actual monday night raw or friday night smackdown i wanted to do an actual weekly wrestling figure show and that's what i did uh to start out on the channel um but then uh it evolved into superheroes because i'm obsessed with marvel yeah. and whatnot started a show called justice assembled 
uh, did a fan film, Superman versus Terminator. And uh, once I transitioned into superhero stuff, uh, the views, um, they just came. Yeah, yeah. that's cr okay. Because one of the questions I want to ask is like, how much, uh, uh, maybe it's like the wrong term, but like a slave to trends are you? Because like, you know, Marvel characters are like, all have been all the rage for quite a while. Like the fan base is huge. And, and so have you tried doing your own unique like, like characters and characters stuff and stuff versus, versus just, just animating marvel or or whatnot and i did it. recently for my for my instagram i created a character called bergman the burger monster and uh <laughs> the the backstory with him was that he was a a 50 year old man and he's a fry cook he gets no respect he's sort of like rodney dangerfield where he just gets no respect and he's miserable and uh he has to go to a fast food. He works at a fast food establishment and uh, the health inspector is about to come. So everybody at the job has to clean up. And uh, he had Bergman. Um, that's his last name, by the way, not his first name. Um, he goes to this area of the fast food place with these uh, disgusting, toxic, like moldy food and the moldy food just the aura and the germs being everywhere kills him and he gets resurrected into this giant burger monster and even though he's this giant burger monster now still nobody gives him any respect and they're not intimidated by him this is a crazy backstory and i love it and how did it go over with your father? it did it did actually pretty well on tiktok it did pretty well on tiktok and i'm looking to shape it a bit more and hopefully turn it into like an official animated short oh my because goodness. just the idea of this poor guy getting no respect from anybody not even his family members um becoming this huge powerful beast and still not getting any respect is pretty funny <laughs> people just look at him and they're like that's the burger the burger guy like Not like he'll him. like he'll roar like he'll use his burger buns and roar at them, uh, intimidate intimidating, and like the boss will be like, "Dude, get back to work." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. It, it. It's a silly premise. I tried it out. There are other characters I haven't announced yet or worked on, uh, like like crazy yet because uh, I. I after college I started an LLC to yeah. for me and my friends um to sort of like shape our ideas and create our ideas and whatnot. Um and I have some stuff, you know, planned out, but uh Bergman is the only one to make it past, you know, any line so far. Well, one day we'll be experiencing the whole burger verse and we'll go to theaters and it'll be yes, all animated the by, -verse. <laughs> by you and the credits will say DM Galloway. <laughs> Hopefully. Um okay. there's so much going on in my mind right now, but I still wanna I still wanna like hold on to this younger DM when he's animating on YouTube. So okay, oh, okay. At what, uh, what? So you're doing this for years. years. You said like, said, like it, you didn't see attention for a couple of years. So you're doing this for years, years. and the the intent was to get into the film industry. Mm -hmm. um, but you ended up you loving. Ended up loving... I, I wouldn't even say the intent was the film. Like of course that's the end goal. But when I yeah. started my YouTube, I just wanted to tell stories that people weren't telling, e mm. even if it was with like these beloved characters or beloved uh wrestlers or whatever you know i at the time we had movies like gi joe uh the rise of cobra and whatnot and they they were films based on beloved characters but they would sort of tarnish the brand uh at the same time with their narrative my goal was to bring back those beloved characters and also tell a story that's quite engaging. Like when I talked about incorporating superheroes into my YouTube channel, I started a show called Justice Assembled. And in this show, you see um, it, it's sort of like the multiverse before the multiverse uh, was getting really popular in, in the movies now. And uh, the premise was that uh, 
a malfunction happens with Thor's hammer and it accidentally uh, zaps Spider-Man into the DC universe. And when he gets zapped into the DC universe, Aquaman goes to the Marvel universe. Oh my so God. now they got to find their way back to their universes while also saving the other universes worlds one side you have dr doom and green goblin taking over the world the other side you have dark side i love how much heart and story there is behind this because you watch a lot of um like animated like i guess you, what would you call like fan animated uh, fan films fan films and they're just yeah. kind of reenactments of fight scenes and stuff and meanwhile you're like <laughs> doing the, the multiverse before it even became popular <laughs> right not not um, to say that i created it or anything because the multiverse has happened since like the 80s yeah, in the comic yeah. books but um i i wanted to explore it visually Okay, so um, you're doing this, and you're going hard at it, and you're producing, and you're getting views. At what point did you say to yourself, this is what I want to, like, this is how I'm going to live my life and make money? And even though you're, like, going to school, and I'm sure you have other pressures to get, like, a day job and stuff, at, like, what point did you realize this can be your career? When I didn't have to get a day job because the AdSense was too good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is early YouTube days. Dang. <laughs> yeah, the AdSense was really, really good. So I didn't. So, like, 15 job. year old DM is making bank on AdSense. Right. And then I, you... I, I never, I never, I worked, the only times I've ever worked an actual job were like uh, a summer camp, uh, like a film summer camp. And I'm that's really only because. You were say flipping burgers. And that's the only time my uh, my parents were like, you need to go outside. Wow. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm making money on YouTube. They're like, just go outside and do something. So I got a job at a at a film summer camp, and I did that for two or three years, three two or three summers. Wow. Um, but yeah, like YouTube AdSense was um, phenomenal back then. But then after all the the controversies with like PewDiePie and Logan Paul and Jake Paul and whatnot. Uh, I think that substantially hurt uh, animators in the long yeah. run. Dang, that sucks. Do you have? Do you mind if I ask how much you were making on YouTube? Like, I've, I've no, I don't even know. I don't even know if you're allowed to share, but I'm just curious. Like, was it? Was it enough to like move out and get your own place? And just, like, no, it wasn't. Mind? It wasn't that much, but yeah. um, it it wasn't enough to move out, but it was enough to. Uh, to live i guess <laughs> like yeah. it, it wasn't it was in the thousands i'll say that <laughs> nice nice so then you decided to go to school um mm -hmm. why did you i'm just curious you know you sounded you sound like you already kind of had a path set in mind with this animation and getting adsense like what was the decision to go to college and well, did it help you in well because your you grow because you, you grow up and your parents say you're gonna go to college. That's gotcha. that, that's that's the decision. And uh, luckily, I didn't have to pay for it. My parents paid for it. Um, but I I recalled um, I went to SVA in Manhattan, the School of Visual Arts on Twenty Third yeah. Street, and um, and I did meet a couple of professors and a couple of students there that I did enjoy. But overall, I didn't like the experience of the film program um, okay. whatsoever. And I remember freshman year, I was like so depressed, so sad. I, I, I felt like this guilt, this enormous guilt, like my parents, my parents were paying for this. And I, I was feeling that it wasn't worth at like a dime to go oh wow uh, to this program and i said to my dad like can i just animate um can i just animate these projects uh and like get clients through that way or whatever and my dad and my mom were both saying like if you drop out of college you got to get a job immediately hmm. which uh obviously that's unrealistic cuz because I graduated college and it took a, a while to get an actual job. For um, sure, yeah. So, so I just stuck it out in college. 
and uh, it definitely it definitely was something that uh, wasn't making me happy. I was pretty depressed for three or four years uh, while I was in college. Um, but the last year wasn't so bad because the last year we had free more freedom with the classes we can attend and stuff. And that was the year I joined a world of animation class and found, um, found what was being said and being shown in that class was extremely valuable because I don't, a lot of people were saying like post this year's Oscars that animation is not a genre or whatever. And that um, it's not, it's not the same thing as film or whatever. In a way, in a sense, I do agree, but in another sense, I don't agree because at the end of the day, you are telling a story visually. It's just done in a different medium, in a different uh, style. So go taking that animation class ha helped me more so with my live action stuff than when, with my animation stuff, I would say, in a weird way. Um, so I would say out of all the classes that I took at SVA for the four years, the one animation class I found to have extreme value okay. in my storytelling abilities. Well, I'm sorry that it was such a tough time for you, but I'm happy that you got one one class out of the, yeah. Out of the experience. Yeah, oh and goodness. a degree. So, so yeah, and a degree. So basically, um, is it safe to say that like this? degree didn't really help you in your current career other than With that definitely not no yeah uh, definitely not w what helped me was well here's the thing right i i i graduated high school in 2013 i went to college that fall um and then i got a girlfriend i i had a i had emergency surgery in 2014 got a girlfriend in tw 2015 i and um during that experience um shit what was, i just lost my train of thought um emergency surgery girlfriend, girlfriend schools, schools school wasn't, wasn't worth, it. worth it one class was worth it that's so Here. so all this stuff happening right yeah and i i was just getting sadder and sadder and it was noticeable to everybody around me how like sad I was and that I was I w wasn't doing my YouTube videos anymore because mm. because that was also the time when the ad revenue was dropping so all this stuff happening at once was just like like a big pot of depression yeah. and uh and I was doing absolutely nothing and I had been watching some movies on Netflix and whatnot and I came across a documentary called The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts, which is a documentary uh, by my now friend, uh, Diamond Dallas Page. He's a WWE Hall of Famer. And um, I saw him rehabilitate his two wrestling legend buddies who fell into a similar depression after their wrestling career. And so... Um, and so I just, just got back up again. I didn't animate f as frequently as I used to. What I did was I just worked hard on one longer video. So I worked on Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was like a, I think it was like a 15 minute film. I don't remember. And then after that, I did a Superman versus Terminator 2. And both of those videos did pretty well. Um, but because they take so long to make, it didn't add any benefit to the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. And I wasn't I was still making no money from it, but I was putting content out again. And uh, shortly after I I did um, Superman vs. Terminator 2, um, I had the opportunity to meet Diamond Dallas Page at New York Comic Con. And I, I said, hey, my name is DM Galloway. I'm a stop motion animator, 35 million views. Uh, I, I knew that DDP was obsessed with Christmas. So I went up to him and I said, um, I, look, this is who I am. This is what I do. Would you like to work on a Christmas special with me? And 
he didn't even have to like look at my stuff or anything just from my presentation to my business cards to just showing him briefly on my phone uh what i do he just said yes and he and this is a guy with an eight million dollar net worth uh yeah. meeting a total stranger and uh saying yeah sure and then he gave me my he gave me his phone number and uh we were talking the past two months about this christmas special uh, I spent like probably two weeks making it and then we posted it on Christmas Day 2017 and it exploded in the wrestling world. WWE shared it. Um, other, you know, wrestling media shared it. And this is the SmackDown before sort of, Christmas, right? It, right. Exactly. Yeah. The SmackDown before Christmas. And it sort of uh, revived this this dying animator, I guess. Um so I, I love this story. It is amazing. It's like a combination of like, you know, hardship and like hope and taking a chance. But I'm just wondering, you know, like you, you said you went through a really tough number of years where you had emergency surgery, your school wasn't going well, YouTube sucked. Like, what, what was that light at the end of the tunnel for you? Why did you come back to animation after this? Even when your parents are like, if you quit school, you have to get a job and you have to get this other camp job. Like what, what was what was bringing you back to do animation through all of this? Because, well, because one, my mom said that I should keep posting content. Hmm. And, and, to, and even though it wasn't getting me anywhere, it was keeping me busy and preoccupied um from thinking about the the tougher parts of life and yeah. whatnot. Um and uh and then after that, um it like literally it sounds corny and it sounds like Gary V type of stuff, but literally putting yourself out there, yeah, you will eventually get something out of it. No matter how long it takes. It took me probably two years after college before I got an actual client like DDP and then on to Big Bad Toy Store and whatnot. During that time I worked with DDP, uh, I had Robot Chicken contacting me because they saw my Batman and Ninja Turtles video from the year before and they really liked that and wanted me to try out to animate for Robot Chicken. Now, I didn't do that only because I live in New York and they're in Los Angeles and moving to Los Angeles and um, paying the crazy amounts in Los Angeles, that would have been a huge, you know, issue for a guy who just got out of college with hardly any money. You know what's um, so funny to me that you just said that? Because I know people who, if the Stupid Buddy studio, that's the studio that makes yeah. Robot Chicken. If mm -hmm. the Stupid Buddy contacted them, they would move across the country instantly for the yeah. opportunity. That's so funny. And, and, so, and, so and, I, did, and I didn't, but I stayed in good touch with a lot of the people there. One person, uh, Alex Kamer, who is an animation director there. Uh, Lee Kelly, who's a producer, Matthew Seinrich, who's the co-creator of Robot Chicken. Yeah. I've kept in touch with a lot of them over the past five years. And uh, and uh, we've talked about collaborating on things and whatnot. Um, but the, the, I told them, like, they, they say, come over and animate for the newest season of Robot Chicken. I'm like, that'd be crazy expensive. So... I'm Why not just go for a contract idea. though? Like go for like three three months, six months or something, and then like come back. Like because because then because that's the other issue, right? I'm posting content for Instagram and whatnot. If I go to LA, um, that's over. how how do I do that? How yeah. how do I keep myself relevant to the fans that I've built up? Gotcha. Okay, so that's another question of mine. Is like, so it took you years to get your first client. Um, and why do you, you know, I guess you kind of explained that, you know, you've had all this 35 million views, this presentation, et cetera. But like, how much work, if you were to start over again from scratch, and then, you know, if I'm starting right now, and I love doing Marvel stop motion, uh, YouTube videos, whatever, how much work would you put in to get your first client? Like, what would you put out there to show, to prove yourself and to say like, hey, you can pay me for this? Well, the one thing that I definitely would have done is left, definitely left school. 
<laughs> Definitely, because that's four You're out years. Of school. That's four years. Four years is um, a long time. Yeah. But see, here's the thing: it, that situation only works in my predicament. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for others who don't have right. a following. Well, you were living at home. Your parents offered to pay for school. You already had a following. It's like, right. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think it would have worked in my situation because then I wouldn't have slowed down uploading, which would have, uh, which would have been good algorithm wise. And yeah. uh, eventually the, the sponsors would have came because so, when, once I, once I put my focus a hundred percent on animation, that's when I've been, con I was contacted by, you know, like I said, stupid buddy, big bad toy store like a lot it just kept coming like an assembly line once i just really focused on it so then what what do you think is making those people contact you is it just because your stuff is viral and enough people see it and somebody talks to somebody and somebody because you're were you you're, it doesn't sound like you were actively applying and reaching out and dming these toy companies i I, I I believe it's because of the storytelling because my earlier stuff, the animation isn't as fluid as it used to as it is today. Um, I think what attracted people was that the story was good and the story was there. Hmm. And um, and that played like a huge part into Robot Chicken being interested, perhaps as like a writer or an animator or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. and to me, one of my, uh, I guess, writing icons or inspirations or whatever would be Rod Serling of the Twilight Zone. I, I went to Disney World every single year and I went on the Tower of Terror all the time because it was my favorite ride. I had never watched the Twilight Zone until 2013 or so. And it's without a doubt my favorite TV show because what Rod Serling was able to do was he took he took serious messages about race, about um, injustice, and he applied it to aliens and robots and stuff and made it work. Yeah. And, and that's what I try to do with like superheroes and Ninja Turtles and all that type of uh, stuff. And I think that's what makes me stand out compared to other superhero animators on YouTube and whatnot. You just answered a really big question I have of, of mine, but I love that. So, cause for instance, like a lot of people and my advice too is when somebody says like, Hey, I want to get into stop motion. What should I animate? I'm like, do a walk cycle, do a character lifting an object, like the classic stuff that shows that you can do the mechanics of stop motion, animation, character, whatever. But you're saying that your, um, you know, your success has come from actually telling short format stories through stop motion. And, right. And compelling, to... compelling ones that are so somewhat relatable. I did a yeah. Halloween special called Batman versus Judge Dredd. And you think Batman versus Judge Dredd, what deep meaning can come from that? Well, in the story, I had it that there's a dead body on the street. And there's an African American in a Halloween costume uh, over this dead body, and Judge Dredd makes the immediate decision that that person is a suspect without knowing the full context. Now Batman was on the rooftop and he saw the full context of what happened. So you have this battle versus what it looks like versus what it actually is, which is something we have, unfortunately, in society today. Me being an African-American, I see these stories in the news every single day of situations like this. And uh, and it, it, it was it, it wasn't in the story because of diversity and because of that. I, I put it in to the animation because it's an important story uh story not because of like oh it's it's a topic that's trending yeah I, um i put it in there because it's something important and relatable and it's on people's mind totally i love how you just broke that down and and um that's a great example if you were to like come up with a format for creating a narrative short format stop motion post like just by bullet point like how would it go because i feel like story is so hard to nail I I mean for my short shorts on like Instagram or whatever, um, you could look back at things like Popeye the Sailor Man or the Looney Tunes or whatnot, and you see 
the structure of those cartoons. It, with Popeye, he probably has the most simple structure. It's that uh, uh, Popeye, Popeye gets messed with by, from Bluto or like whatever. Like something messes with Popeye. Popeye eats his spinach. Popeye yeah. stops that thing from messing with him. Gotcha. gotcha. Super, quick. Super quick. So like action, like action. Uh, or like, uh, I don't know, situation, uh, uh, spinach, spinach, action, action result, result, I guess. I guess. <laughs> exactly. Pro problem, spinach, problem, problem results. Spinach res resolution. Gosh. <laughs> um, okay. So how I'm also like wondering, so now that you're full into your career of doing stop motion specifically with action figures, and, and like, how did you make these brand deals? Like you said, brands were coming to you, but then, you know, like if a brand came to me right now and is like, hey, I'd like to order a stop motion from you. I'd be like, uh, I don't know how much to charge you. Uh, maybe I need to work with some people, like like all this stuff. Like how are you sorting out contracts from the start? And all, like, I feel like I'm just asking random questions now, but like, how, did, how does this go for you? I mean, I'm a one man band. Yeah. yeah. So luckily, whatever budget there is, it all goes in my pocket. Um, <laughs> and uh, so do you ask a friend like, hey, what's your budget? Or do you say this is my day rate and an animation like this will take you me a week? I, I used to do it by budget, but now that now I do it by rate because I think I've acquired enough clients and enough, you know, connections where I can, you know, charge a professional fee oh you should yeah, yeah for sure because if you, if you amazing. give a budget if you give a budget like I, i'll i'll mention that last year um before i signed on officially with neca toys um there was a huge it, it wasn't even huge it was a i i guess iconic brand and i an iconic animated character right Mm -hmm. uh, I was reached out to animate this character for the first time in 20 years or something, 10, 20 or 15 years. It's been a while since this character was animated and it was only to promote merchandise uh, of this character. So I know, I know what I typically get for other jobs or whatnot. Um, and I was expecting that either the same amount or more. Yeah. But this this client uh, wanted two hundred two hundred $200 for five minutes of animation. Oh, my goodness. I'd be like, $200 just to consult me. <laughs> so That's so crazy. I was, I was oh, definitely no. out immediately. Um, five minutes of animation? For $200, yeah. Um, wow, that's really disappointing. You're, I'm but, trying to think but, of what iconic character this could even it, be. It's an right? iconic. It's an iconic character, but the re the main reason I said no was because the character isn't as relevant anymore. Like if it was a thing where this character had a hundred million followers on Instagram yeah. or something, yeah. maybe I could do two hundred for maybe a minute. I, I that would be my counter, right? Because there's different payoffs with that, right? Because I know I know people who've done stuff with celebrities like Will Smith, yeah, and yeah. and at first they do those low ball uh, deals, but then as the relationship grows, so does the money. Yeah, um, and and the clients come in, and it's so sad that like I know what you're talking about, where people have done. I've talked to some people who have done stuff for celebrities for basically free, and I'm like, these celebrities are worth like a hundred million dollars, and they're asking you, like, as an independent creator, to do something so rare and unique for them for nothing. Like, it's so stupid, and I'm I'm upset at whoever this character is. Like, they're selling merchandise. They're not like well, hey, we well, well here's the thing. Fun. After like, you're gonna make. After money Shortly off of after it. i said no they put that character for sale because that character has no value unless it's owned by a big company mm. and so that character did get sold by a big company uh i think it was earlier this year but now they're going to turn that character into nfts and whatnot i bet a lot of an animation fans We'll know who I'm talking about based on that, but um, I have some ideas, but I I don't know. 
I don't I don't want to de- no, defamate the creators of let's that character or anything. Oh, really? Uh, so, okay. But, so now, that, yeah. When, at what point were you working full time in, like, you know, this is your career, this is your full time income? At what point did you move out and have your own apartment and all this stuff? Was there a turning point where brand deals came in for you? Definitely 20, 2019 was the big year for yeah, sure. Yeah. 2019, 2019 big bad toy store uh they were kind enough to give me half <laughs> essentially half of my yearly earning um amazing and um other clients uh like jazz jazzwares working with jazzwares i got a new car <laughs> congratulations <laughs> <laughs> it, like like it, it was it's incredible it's fast it was like an assembly line um but then but then again this year i signed on with neca toys because uh the thing with covid delaying toys and whatnot delaying everything making budget smaller uh i worked with uh i worked with a certain uh superhero brand last year and their budget was extremely small at least according to them because of covid um but I didn't want that unpredictability moving forward. So NECA, they're awesome people over there. They're extreme artists. And every time that I did work with them freelance, there would be no issues. I make it. They're like, it's excellent. They they get it uh, sent for approval from like Nickelodeon or whatever. Amazing. And it's just it's just like an easier thing. Whereas if I'm working with a big toy company and... Um, and I animate a thing, then you have dumb marketing people making creative decisions that are dumb yeah. creative decisions. And I'm not <laughs> and I'm not quiet about it. That's the thing. If you're a young animator and you work with these like commercial clients and whatnot, uh don't be a kiss ass or a yes man or anything. If you have a strong creative um choice that you want to defend, try to defend it. It won't it won't always go your way but you'll get a lot of respect for even trying a thousand percent. Listen, from my past career, like being on the creative brief marketing side, we have no idea. Like we're paying research companies to tell us what to do. And then we're paying ta- like uh, uh, creative agencies to make the brief. And then it'll come back to the VP and the VP will like, I don't know. I don't really like this thing. Well, like it doesn't matter what this person, this one person who is so irrelevant to like what people want thing. So a hundred percent, like push your ideas. You're the artist, you're the creative. And also I'm, I'm really happy that you you're working with like such a good client right now. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, NECA, NECA, they've been absolutely incredible and I've gotten to, even talk to some of the talent that these toys are based off. Like recently um, I spoke to uh, like one of the actresses that I used to watch all the time uh, from the Ninja Turtles and uh, my goodness. And it's been a pretty incredible experience working with her. Um, And in the future, I can't say what specifically it is, but I have talked with, you know, with people on upcoming stuff and it's it's been very cool because i'm i'm only a filmmaker in a toy company but it feels like i'm in hollywood because i'm talking with these clients and whatnot and they like my work and it's like it's almost like i am having that hollywood experience even though i'm technically in the toy industry right now that's that's so cool and i wonder like you, your job is kind of to market toys at this point right like in in a unique way and style that only you as an artist can like you can't go to anybody and be like animate this for me like it has to be like somebody who knows how action figures can be animated and rigs set up and stuff right and you you can't really be taught that i guess right like you can go and, to school and, for animation but like and the other thing too is that i love all of these characters like i'm like crazy you know i love superman i love yeah. uh all the figures behind me um <laughs> the five thousand figures on your wall behind and, and on that wall and on this wall and on that insane. wall uh, I, I i love them all so much where i i would see other animators on youtube um 
animate these characters and you go something's off not because the animation itself is jittery but it's yeah. because they don't understand uh some of the motions of what that character would do um an example would be like the wasp from the ant-man and wasp movie right people will animate the wasp character like she's a butterfly but she's a wasp so the wings got to keep whereas like they will have it like yeah totally so I'm, I, that I, I, I'm, I'm that i'm that like particular with like the different mannerisms of each character like for example a character like jason right like jason yeah. or michael myers or whatever right they don't move a, they stand still a lot of the time but you have to sort of animate the chest maybe going slowly up and down so you get the idea that this is a large man who is very much alive um it's just those type of small details and w when i've been working with um nickelodeon on the ninja turtles videos that i've been doing lately they see that they see my love uh for the brand yeah they probably they probably get excited about just watching what you do like it that totally makes sense to me one of the questions i wanted yeah. to ask was like how much creative freedom do you have to give up to work with these brands like if you're doing this full time do you ever miss coming up with the you know the narratives and things that you're doing before that maybe you don't do anymore well with NECA, i have a hundred percent creative freedom as long as Done. it's on brand Good. <laughs> yeah I, like literally i we don't the thing with um NECA is that um the thing with NECA is that we like to show not tell because what happens is if you tell a lot, you're waiting for approvals of the things you tell and whatnot. So what I do is that I just make the thing. I make it on brand. I make it appropriate, et cetera. And then I show it off to them and they're thrilled with it. Like it, it's almost like a surprise gift. Love like that. surprise. We made this thing. You like it? And they go, yep. <laughs> I love that. Uh, whereas with other companies, like I did, uh, I did two advertisements for Marvel and Marvel Legends and um, not to get too much in detail, but with Disney and Marvel Studios, they have a lot of creative control. So it can't be, for example, it can't be cooler than the movies, <laughs> which that would be hard to do because the movies are very cool and uh, they can't be like an actual episode of a cartoon because if they wanted to do that, they would just hire their yeah. own animators to do that etc so there are little like hoops and obstacles to go through when you're doing it like that um but with the current work that i do again with ninja turtles and with gargoyles gargoyles is a disney brand um but they've been a blast to work with because um they see that i am a 90s kid and i indeed watched the show <laughs> I mean, you're barely it's, a, it's 90s a darker kid. show. You were born in '95. Come on, you were five years old when it was 2000. <laughs> I still do. I still remember '98 and '99. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll take the '90s kid. Yeah, you'll take the <laughs> a '90s baby. Let's say that. How about that '90s baby? There, there, uh, there. Two early 2000s kid. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joshing you. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering. You know, you, we've talked a lot about your career, but do you have a current strategy? Like, do you have a like? You know, I, you're very active on social media, but is there intention behind it and to get more clients? Like, or are you, it sounds like things have kind of fallen into place for you over the years. Like what, going forward, I would say like, what is your strategy for, you said you wanted more stability and predictability and stuff. Like, so what is, this is the biggest convoluted question. What is your career strategy at this point with what you do? I mean, luckily right now in the toy company that I work for, um, I, I, I have enough money coming in where I can be relaxed and not worry about anything. And, but also the work that I get is not repetitive. Um, yeah. Because, because this toy company is a small toy company and they work on so many brands, right? Uh, one week I could be doing Ninja Turtles. The next week is Gargoyles. So it's always fresh. Um, it's always fresh working on things um pretty much now what i am doing i guess would be saving money 
to bring my original ideas to life to hopefully bring to festivals and to the attention of producers and whatnot because uh e even though i'm extremely happy about where i am today uh eventually i would like to be remembered uh in the same fashion as like you know uh like a like a tim burton or a brad bird like somebody that a lot of animators looked up to and even though i'm i would consider myself as like a a, a hannah barbera for their stop motion because i get it out as fast as possible and uh and i get it out as fast as po possible and in that time try to get the quality as good as possible but pretty much the reason i i say hannah barbera is like the timeline because i'm yeah. always working on these on a very short timeline and a low budget and i'm not saying that i'm the only one who can do it I, i'm in a, i'm half black half white uh grew up in brooklyn new york um i i literally have no connection starting out and what i try to do even with my own friends who are in the film industry and animation industry that still don't get it is that even though uh, there might be moments in your life where nothing is working out. As long as you keep pumping content and not over criticizing anything, like eventually you'll you'll get a bite. Just put some bait in the water, and something will, you know, stick or something will get, you know. So, so I I love that, which is like keep putting yourself out there, uh, and eventually something will come along. I think. I like in my mind, I call that kind of like manufactured luck, I guess, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like eventually the right connection, we'll see it, blah, blah, blah. But I also want to challenge that a little bit because like you're doing something that was like really cool and super unique and telling a story and like using like, uh, you know, very popular characters. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that also plays played into kind of your success? Like that now you're working with toy companies who specifically wanted to market exactly what you're doing right it, so how I mean, do you it definitely what your... did um but there are there are examples of other animators who do original content totally that, yeah that get you know crazy sponsored deals and whatnot like my friend i have a friend frantic frames on instagram yeah he he's like amazing these, he's been on this podcast yeah he does like these incredible animation things and they're totally original and he's younger than me and he does a pretty darn good job at you know branding himself so uh, although yes like a character like superman or whatever uh will could help you out in terms of trends and algorithms and whatnot if you have pure talent and you know you have pure talent just yeah. keep putting stuff out there and eventually something great is going to happen so okay yes 100 percent um what is your game? So, you know, you mentioned that you want to do some original stuff yourself. You're working on Burger Man right now, et cetera. What is your game plan to make yourself into a Tim Burton or a Brad Bird, et cetera, on the side? So you said you're saving up to do some of your own stuff. What is the game plan with that? Is it the same strategy where you're going to start pumping out content until, you know, somebody looks at it and is like, oh my God, there's like this whole universe behind this burger. If Burger Man is the thing, there's this whole universe behind, there's this whole burger universe, burger verse. <laughs> let's bring that into a, I don't know, a longer format, bigger budget thing. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to go the route, which is kind of like what I've been doing where I come up with like a pitch package and then I directly go to studios and say, look, I've been creating the ideas for the show and here's a package, do you wanna work on this? I, I think definitely a pitch pack. I, I think both routes are actually pretty good. Um, the hardest part, I, I think a pitch pack for, for my situation and how I are, I have a lot of connections now in the industry and whatnot, I think a pitch package would, would work better for me. But for somebody who hasn't had those connections and whatnot, probably both. Pro either I, I would say both or just pump out the content. Like I forgot to... The, uh, there's another animator who made that spider, that cute little spider. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what you're talking about. I can't think of their name. But, it's like a CG spider that actually right. looks cute. And but, now it's a kid's show. And now it's a kid's Netflix. show. So, yeah. so 
I think if you start with nothing, all you have, all you can do really is bump things out. Because if you don't have those connections and you're passing someone like a packet or whatever, they're not going to look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it definitely is. You have more say if you're like, hey, uh, you know, I've already created this thing. Look at the social proof that already has come with this. Mm -hmm. Totally makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah I, I guess like, well, I wanted to talk to you about like, you know, the future of your career, because it sounds like you're still pretty new into this. You said 2019 things changed for you. And now it's, you know, 2022, just a couple of years later. Going forward, you know, you said you wanted to um, create some of your own content, but do you see yourself, and you're right now a one-man show, do you see yourself working a little bit more with your friends or something with, with the LLC? See, I, that's the problem, right? After college, I started an LLC to work with my friends on new ideas and creative ideas. But the problem that ended up happening was like money, like nobody was getting paid. And that and and that and and that's the issue, right? It's like it's like we want to tell stories. We want to make really great films, right? And I think in my opinion, uh, the sacrifice into doing that is just time. Yeah. And I and I was willing to put in a lot of time to help my friends tell stories and whatnot. But then when it came to uh, my friends help, trying to help me or whatever, they're like, oh, uh, can I get 300 a day or whatever? It's like, I'm in the same boat as you. You're so like, excuse you me. <laughs> exactly. And then, and basically what I tried to do with my LLC, which I still have, and I'm using it for my own original work, um, is sort of like the Image Comics route. Do you know Image Comics? So Todd McFarlane, uh, Rob Liefeld, uh, and Jim Lee, they started this this uh, comic book company uh, to get away from Marvel and DC screwing them over. And what they did was something simple. They all started creating stuff under one roof, and they had it at an 80-20 split. 80% 80 80 goes to the creator and 20% goes into the company to help, you know, the company and like the all that business mumbo jumbo out. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to do with my LLC. But I get it. The time the times today for people my age are a lot harder than they used to be when my parents were my age and whatnot. Um so my recommendation to younger artists is that if you do want to collaborate, just know that if you sacrifice the time to create these things, it can work out in your favor. Yeah, I think that's a, a big thing. Like what you just said, I think is super tough to find like a creative partner or partners who have the same motivation and kind of fire that you do and want to create something like that. Like it's so hard to find people like that, especially as you get older, I think too. So yeah, um, I know that I, I, uh, I've lost a best friend because of this LLC. Oh no. Cause you kept being like, pay me, pay me $300 a day, please. <laughs> no, I, no, I wasn't, I don't ask for money at all. What I did was basically the percent, the percentage thing, right? It, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty fair deal. Um, but, but he goes, no, I need, I need this, this, and that. It's like I'm, I'm putting my own personal money into this LLC, yeah. and into this production. The LLC has to have something for it to float, you know. Um, but it was getting so, so ridiculous, and it's like, all right, fine, I'll just do this myself, and then you can, you can look at me from afar. <laughs> right. Do you think that's a big thing holding you back these days is finding people who would go in and collab uh, with you on a project like this I, currently? I do. I have two, I have two friends uh, that, that are always there when I need them. It's just, it's so hard to find so many collaborators on a studio level. And so yeah. many of my filmmaker friends from college, a lot of them are struggling and I feel sorry for them and I want to help them. Um, just like I would like them to help me, <laughs> but, um, but in the situations where a lot of modern relationships are so one-sided, um, you got to figure out how to survive on your own. And that's what, 
that's what I came to learn in 2018 and 2019 is that nobody is going to help me. Um, no. So I got to, I got to do this all on my own. And how can I do something on a studio level on my own? And again, I look at people like uh, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera when they were first starting out in cartoons and whatnot and Tom and Jerry and whatnot. And, yeah. and, you know, if they could do it, I could do it. <laughs> totally. I think, I mean, that's a big lesson that I had to learn as well. Like I, I told you previously, I was in the business world. I was kind of always just waiting for somebody to give me an opportunity until I was like, nobody, I have to do this on my own if I want to get into this. So right. yeah, um, I guess, I guess it's a big problem of where to find cool, creative people that jive with you and, on and like the a other personal problem and business level. Too. The other problem is that colleges and like schools, like when you grow up, they tell you, you go to college, you get a job. They yeah. don't tell you, they don't tell you, oh, you have to apply on LinkedIn and, and all these other crazy websites or whatever, because nowadays you can't go to a company and drop a resume. You can't do any of that. No, stuff. there's no such thing. The only thing you can do is put content on your social media, hope it gets attention build up clients and then that's the only way you can get a job as an artist really uh i don't even know how people who aren't artists get a job <laughs> i i have no <laughs> clue like I, my well let me tell you that you have to apply through linkedin and and like indeed and all these websites you can't even go to a physical office and like hand in a resume it just doesn't exist i remember i tried that coming out of university when like linkedin wasn't even a thing I, I remember I like went to Manulife's head office, which was like down the street from where I lived. And I went to their like front desk and I was like, here's my resume. I'm like a recent business grad. And they're like, you can't even, we don't, we can't even give this to anybody. You have to apply on exactly. monster with monster.ca. I remember. And, and um, you don't even know if a human gets it and it, they probably don't, they probably have a computer looking for. Oh, hundred percent. It's a, because it's like an algorithm people, that picks out words. Right. You look at the people up top. And you wonder how they got there. And it must have been a computer. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, post-college, um, we had we were mandated, not, not post-college, during my senior year of college, we were mandated to take a career strategies class. And I remember during that class, we had like some sort of midterm or whatever. On the very same day, Mel Brooks was in... Um, was in Barnes and Noble, which was a few blocks away. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, Mel Brooks, comedy legend, film director and writer is going to be talking, doing a and a and meeting fans at Barnes and Noble. And I'm mandated to take a class where they're telling me to bother job recruiters and going to the office and whatnot, just a bunch of bullshit, just right. so I can get So just so I can get a degree. Um, Okay, so sc screw school, um, you know, four years in, uh, I don't know, like $40,000, let's say. What I if think in, my, I think my tuition was like 80. 40, that's crazy. I think it was. Four years in $80,000, you know, what could you do with four years in $80,000 instead? What if there was like an ex another, like your parents were like, don't go to school, go to this artist collab thing where you are like in an incubator and it's $80,000 and you create with other artists, like you have an LLC, you are put together with other stop motion artists and your goal is to create kind of uh, something that gets attention to get client work. Like would this, am, am I, what I'm saying, is that even makes sense? <laughs> hey, it, so it sounds like a fantasy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know what there would be, like, if you look at, I, here's the thing, right? Again, it's a situational type deal, right? If you have no connections, no education or whatnot, film school, animation school, perfect for you, right? Yeah, yeah. For someone like me, who my friends are all over the world, I don't have any friends in my neighborhood, but if I went to Oklahoma, I would have at least one friend over there that I can hang out with or even stay at their house. That's how that's how crazy the internet is, is that we become friends with all these people from different states and whatnot. And really yeah. good friends too, where I know their kids and stuff. Um, 
But if you're in a situation where, where you're just starting out from zero, college is a place for you. But just know that that the people you meet, they're not necessarily going to be there for you. Not hmm. all the time, at least. Sometimes hmm. at the most important parts of your life, they're going to say no or or because because nowadays with people my age, you probably see it on Instagram. There are so many depression and and an anxiety pages and whatnot yeah. trying to motivate people because in the late 90s, early 2000s, going to public school and whatnot, they they sort of groomed us to think that it's just as simple as graduating high school, college, and getting a job. Oh, and it's 100%. not that simple whatsoever. There's sort of like a poverty line between college and um and and you know real life like adult life and job life and whatnot i want to say in 2018 the amount of money that i made was probably 600 dollars. but that but that was but in 2019 which i said was the big change it was way more of course it was way more than that it was life-changingly more than that um yeah so it's all about patience self-survival knowing people reading people yeah don't get too gullible about people totally i think it's so interesting to hear your perspective like i went to sheridan college which is a specifically animation school and my experience was totally different i became super close with the profs and the students and like i've collaborated and worked with them on projects and given them work and gotten work from them as well mm -hmm. um so it's so interesting to hear your perspective and i guess like the point i was I'm trying not, to make before I'm not saying that everyone I met was terrible or whatever. No, like, but it, yeah, I, I, I've had I have friends that I still talk to today and whatnot. But the problem is we all have different goals in this industry and we're yeah. not willing to put some of them aside to work on one great thing. Like, for example, uh, John Carpenter's Halloween, right? You had a bunch of filmmakers on that set post-college working on this low budget horror movie that who knew like how did they even know that it would be a blockbuster hit that would have multiple sequels or whatnot they didn't they just were they just put their interests aside to work really hard on this one film and it turned into a mega success now my personal favorite movies are stuff like the crow robocops uh psycho like things that are very theatrical i guess uh, things that aren't like so A24 where like a grandma is coughing blood into an orange juice bottle or whatever the heck, like some artsy fartsy bullshit. But a lot of people in my in in my school, they looked down on those successful films and they looked highly into those independent films. And that's good for wow. them. That's their taste. But in a world where we have to survive, you have to look at those trending films and those popular films. And perhaps you, even though your interests are in those independent films, try to incorporate some of that into the popular films and see if you created something unique, similar to what George Lucas did with uh, THX, right? And then he went on to Star Wars. Yeah, right? Uh, but that's it, what I'm... it's it's about being open minded more so than closed. -minded. Totally, yeah. yeah. And especially in art school, you'll have these pretentious teachers be closed minded and tell everybody else, no, what your what you see on that billboard uh, for Spider Man No Way Home, that is horse shit. You gotta watch. Yeah. Um, you got to watch uh, Casablanca to really understand. No, how to... Casablanca is a good movie. Well, I mean, I mean, like whatever they're saying is like, you know, um, whatever a 24 movie is coming. Yeah, out. <laughs> that's... But, that's, but that's kind of what I was trying to say before. Like, what if instead of going to college where you're you're just in this like, uh, I don't know, you're in this other world for four years it, at the control of whatever professors, what if instead of college there was this other thing where it's like hey there's this group of young artists who are making a film like this and you can go and be a part of that and whatever comes of it it'll be split like 80 20 or whatever and you'll spend like two or three years making this film and that's your that's your like quote unquote education do you think that would be something that would be more interesting to you 
then going and learning about like perhaps you know, but there's also a free version of that and that's the internet right but i'm just that's saying like but you also said you had so much struggle to to right. get to where you are and to find people what if there was like a structured anti-school school where the project is to create something uh professional that you can get money from i guess like i don't even know if that that ex i'm does that exist other than just like an independent filmmaker hiring their friends? I, I, my, I, I mean, it sort of exists in the internet, like with YouTube and Instagram right, yeah. and whatnot. Cause you see, for example, um, like these dancers, right. These dancers on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. And eventually they get, they get friends like Paula Abdul and stuff working with them, you know? Yeah, they all, they all like reach out. Well, eventually it, if they become they, big enough, they all people know people. Yeah. They keep collaborating with each other. The views go up and then you have these, uh, these Avengers of the internet, you know, like a, as much as I don't appreciate what Logan Paul and Jake Paul did with uh adsense for animators because of their actions and whatnot yeah. affecting how advertising is handled on youtube and whatnot um in a way i can respect these people who who made a large following on youtube from nothing because they they didn't buy their way to the top they started from nothing they just worked really hard and that's what everybody should do yeah and i guess i I guess that's maybe the uh, like credits of your of your story is uh, credits of yours. I don't even know what what am I saying. But it's it's like the what you're trying to say is like do the hard work, do it, do what you know you're talented at, and put yourself out there. And if you keep doing that, you know, like you'll get the attention, you'll start getting partnerships, collaborating, reaching out to people, etc. Just like going hard at what you want to do. Cause, exactly. Cause like, I think what you're doing is super special and super unique and there's not a lot of people doing it because it's it's very specific you know like you can't just wake up and one day being like i'm gonna be a stop motion animator for youtube like this is something that's very unique to what you can do and you've you've put in the hard work and put yourself out there and it's it's really paid off for you very recently i guess just these past couple of years which i think is amazing right now i i'm grateful that everything did turn out yeah because <laughs> again it was pretty scary in 2017 2018 but you know as long as you just keep working hard and putting it out it'll it, it i'm not even a religious person but really all those struggles that happen they're just a test of your strength and if you yeah. can get through it you will succeed Okay, I don't want to take up all your time, but maybe maybe my last question. When you were struggling in 27, 18, 2017, 18, was there a backup plan? Like, okay, I have I feel pressure to actually go and work at an office or a camp or whatever because this isn't panning out. Mm -hmm. No, I it 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 was it was this or die. <laughs> I I kind of like that actually. This or die, like. <laughs> So you were like, regardless of what happens, I'm going to keep pushing and figure it out. Yeah, because, I, believe, there... because I truly believed in myself. That's amazing. I, I where, where does that come from, though? Because it's so hard to, you know, a lot of people struggle with, with that mentality. You know, the imposter syndrome, like all these things you hear about. And like, where does that, where does this belief in yourself come from? It, it, it comes from the fans that were with me on YouTube from when I was 14 years old. And I, so I'm, like the social validation of other the, people the, enjoying what you do. Of course. Yeah. It, I think it might've been a different situation if I hadn't started with YouTube and didn't have that validation. I don't, I, it's so, I can't even think of doing anything else, but telling stories. Yeah. Yeah maybe marketing I, I i don't know because I, I i was interested in marketing when i was in high school they had a marketing class in my high school um so i guess without filmmaking it would have been marketing i'm not sure because they they sort of go into each other as more now now more than ever i mean um, you're just marketing right now you're marketing products by animating like it's the same thing right so I, I probably, yeah, probably marketing, but overall, like I said, 
tell my mom like it's either this or die <laughs> she's like i don't want my son to die please <laughs> please keep making these films <laughs> and, and the other thing too going back to like the pretentious uh film professors and whatnot the one thing that artist young artists need to do because this this thing has been uh i guess become popular is like the segregation of people in terms of like everybody everybody's like interests or beliefs or whatever you got to put all that stuff aside you got to work with people who are different colors uh different genders different um i guess uh sexual identities and all that type of stuff you you just if they got a beating heart and they have the same passion as you work with them yeah. work on stuff together and I, I i see people who take advantage of these things like for example um like people who will do these like african-american scholarships for films and whatnot and i am an african-american um but i i I wouldn't I wouldn't just look for African American people to work with. I just want to work with anybody and everybody who has the same passion that I do. Whether that makes sense. whether yeah. that was uh a transgender person or uh an Indian person, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. If you have the same goal as me, then you're on the team. <laughs> I love it. Um is there anything else you wanted to share as we're as we're wrapping up? share <laughs> um, or say or just it could be just nothing that's fine too i've i've picked your brain a lot i i mean for my my advice for young for young artists is to be open-minded keep working hard uh work with everybody no matter what as if they have even if they have the same mission as you you know work with them uh don't be greedy um because if you're greedy, you're going to regret it later on when you see, you know, non-greedy people make it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and, and it's, it's hard to say greedy because, I again, I understand the expenses of life and whatnot. Um, but if you can fight to figure out a way to make it work, make it work because yeah. you, will, you won't regret it. Um, yeah. There, there have been filmmakers who were working at, like Quentin Tarantino. He worked at a video store, and he was collaborating with filmmaker friends and whatnot. You know, yeah, uh, it's possible to make it work. So do everything totally. you can to make your dream work, and it will work. <laughs> do everything you can to make your dream work. I love that, and it will work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, DM, thank you so much for coming on the chat. It's been a pleasure to pick your brain, hear your story and hear how it all happens. Cause I love, you know, it's very interesting to see when I see a post on LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever, and then actually to talk to the person behind it. So thank you so much for giving me the behind the scenes. Thank you for having me, man. It was nice talking to you. Of course. And if you're listening and you want to get in touch with DM or follow his work or whatever, you can do so by reaching out or following him on Twitter uh, or Instagram. And I'm going to, which is DGDX official on Instagram, DGDX yeah. animation on Twitter. And you can go to his web website, which is DM Galloway. And I'll include all those links in the description of this chat. And that's all for now. So thank you so much for listening. Okay, bye. <laughs>